What's up guys, welcome back, or it's your first time here, welcome. So today we are gonna be doing a full face of first impressions. The products that I'm gonna be trying today are either new releases or just makeup that I just simply have not yet used before. So I really hope you guys are gonna enjoy it. I'm so excited to do today's video. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts down below. Let me know all of your thoughts on the products that I'm using today, if you love them, if you don't like them, and why. I always love hearing what you guys have to say. You know that already. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy these types of videos and hit that subscribe button if you wanna be subscribed if you want to be subscribed, obviously. <laughs> it's too early, guys, oh my God. If you want to, what do I usually say? If, if you just want to see more of me, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom you guys in and let's just get started. I'm excited. Let's do this. Um, so I recently got some milk skincare sticks in the mail. This is their newest one. It's the watermelon brightening serum. Really interested to try this. I have never tried any of the milk skincare. To be honest with you, I don't know how I feel about putting skincare on with this stick just because I don't know how sanitary this would be. Uh, I know that's a little bit hypocritical because there's so many products that you apply with a stick all the time, or at least I do. But for some reason with skincare, that just doesn't sit right in my soul. I'm really interested to see how this is going to work. Okay, why does this not smell like watermelon? Which is probably a good thing for a skincare product, but also I want this to smell like watermelon. Ooh, ooh. That's not what I expected that to feel like. It feels very, very cooling. It feels almost like a really, really thick oil, but it definitely feels like heavy on my skin. Do you guys notice any brightening effects? I don't really know how instant this is supposed to be, but um, it definitely feels like it has added a nice like hydrating layer to my face, but I don't know how much I love the way that feels. It feels very, very, very heavy. So now let's move on to the actual makeup. I got a ton of new Wet n Wild stuff. This was a product that really intrigued me because it reminds me of the Smashbox Primer Water. And if this could be a dupe, that would be really, really awesome. So it's a Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer Water Spray, pretty self-explanatory. I believe this is from their new collection. The nozzle isn't the best nozzle I've ever used. It sort of deviates a little bit when you spray it out. Like I felt the product hitting me here and here. <laughs> Not really so much in the center. My face does feel slightly tacky though. Very similar to how the primer water feels on my face from Smashbox. So now moving on to a glowy primer. I know we're prepping with so many products today, but like I said, there's so many things that I wanna try. And I have this Burberry uh, Fresh Glow Golden Radiance Luminous Face Base. And when I first got this, I thought that it would be way, way too dark for my skin tone. I mean, look at that. It's literally six shades darker than what my skin is. When I actually swatched it on the back of my hand and blended it out, it completely blended into my skin and it just gave my face, not my face, the back of my hand rather, like a really pretty bronzy radiant glow and it was gorgeous. And because summer is also like right around the corner basically, I'm definitely gonna be getting a little bit more tan. So I think that this would be really beautiful to enhance it um, when I do get more tan and to sort of just, you know, make me overall just very, very glowy, which is something I'm always into. Trust the process. So I'm just gonna rub it in with my fingers. Ah, yes. See, it completely blends into the skin, doesn't even really darken it, it just slightly gives a little bit of like a tan to the face. I feel like this would be such a pretty product to wear even if you aren't really wearing any other makeup. You just wanna add some color and glow to your face. I really like that though. That totally gave me an instant tan. So now moving on to the foundation. Today we're gonna be using the new CoverFX Power Play Foundation. This I am slightly terrified to try out um, because this is supposed to be more of a matte product Hence the reason why I've prepped my skin so much and I also added that glowy face base because I have dry skin, if you didn't know, um, and matte products don't usually vibe so well with my skin. They usually just accentuate all my dryness. And this is also supposed to be very, very full coverage, which is not something that I also usually go for. But I have heard great things about it and I'm going to also try to make it work for my skin. So I'm going to use a beauty blender instead of a brush to really sheer it out. And with all the prep that I did, hopefully it won't make it look as matte as it would if I were to just go in with like moisturizer or any other primer. I'm gonna be using the shade G40 today, which seems to match me pretty well. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the product. I'm really gonna try and do a very small amount. 
um, because like I said, this is supposed to be very full coverage. So I'm just really gonna apply this mostly concentrated in the center of my face and then blend it out. That little drop, like I literally have the smallest amount on the back of my hand. I dipped my beauty blender in it once and that covered both my cheeks perfectly. So this definitely does have a lot of pigmentation to it. So a little bit will go a long way. With these types of foundations that are very, very full coverage, I always find it best to use like a tiny amount of product and just build it up very slowly because they could very easily get very heavy very quickly. That was very three times. <laughs> Five seconds into putting this on, I actually really, really like the way that looks. It's definitely more of a matte finish for sure. Like this doesn't have any glow to it at all. It doesn't feel drying, but it definitely doesn't feel like emollient. It's almost as if it's already set down on my face. So that makes me feel like this is going to be very long wearing. We are definitely going to see. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to my concealer. So this is the Wander Beauty Duelist Concealer. And this is a super cool product. You have a liquid on one side and then a little stick on the other. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the liquid directly underneath my eyes and then put the stick um, on the areas where I want a little bit more coverage on my face. By the way, I'm using the shade Light and this color looks like it's gonna match me perfectly. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the liquid side underneath my eyes. I'm gonna blend this out immediately with my Beauty Blender. The finish is super pretty. It has a little bit of like a glow to it, which I love for a concealer. As far as the coverage goes, it's definitely a light coverage. You still see some of my like darkness and blue tones peeking through underneath. I still feel like it covered nicely. Like this is the perfect amount of coverage for me for every day. Mm, I feel like I don't even need to cover up really anything. That foundation really did the trick, but just for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm gonna Put some around my nose and on my chin because that's usually where I like to conceal a little bit more. I always like products that are sort of two-in-ones. This seems to be really convenient, the fact that it has the liquid as well as the stick. So if you're the type of person who likes to conceal your face as well as your under eyes, then this may be a really cool product to try out. I actually really do like the consistency of that. It's not my favorite concealer I've ever tried, but it's definitely really nice and it's one that I'm going to continue to use for sure. Believe it or not, I have never tried the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. Bit of a funny story. So I had a Laura Mercier powder that I bought a while ago and when the translucent powder got really, really popular, I thought that I had it in my collection already because I had this Laura Mercier loose powder and I was using it in my videos and talking about it in my videos like it was the Laura Mercier translucent powder but it wasn't. So I have been using the wrong product and talking about it like it was this one for such a long time. And that is so embarrassing. I can't believe I did that. I remember I had a few people comment on my videos whenever I would use that powder being like, uh, Jamie, that's not the translucent powder. That's the whatever powder, I forget the name. And I was always like, what? That doesn't even make any sense. And then one day I looked and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> that's not the Laura Mercier translucent. I'm going to take my beauty blender, grab a little bit of the product. I don't wanna bake with this at all. I really just wanna lightly set. I'm just gonna set my nose and under eye area just because that's the areas that I feel like fades the fastest. That looks good. I can see why people like this. <laughs> After using Hourglass Veil, really no powder just compares to how beautiful that one is. It's just topping every powder in my collection right now, including the new ones that I'm trying. So I have another product from Laura Mercier that's actually new. This is the Matte Bronzing Powder in Soleil number one. It looks like such a pretty color. So I'm using this on my Morphe G7, one of my favorite bronzer brushes. This does smell slightly like coconuts too. Sort of reminds me of the um, Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. It has, a, it has a very, very similar scent. The actual product though reminds me a lot of the Bobbi Brown bronzer that I've been wearing a ton recently, the um, Golden Natural number one. It's not a new product or anything, it's just a bronzer that I've been loving and using. It's a very, very similar shade. It also seems to be a pretty sheer product. Like I am going into this product with my brush and just tapping it off very gently and I'm getting just like a wash of color, which I like because that gives you more control when you're applying it so you don't get like a stripe of bronzer, which is never fun. So this is a new palette from Rimmel. It's the Magnifies Spice Edition Eye Contouring Palette. What does this remind me of? Oh my God, 
This looks exactly like the Herb Decay Naked Heat. Hold please. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a dupe. They're not even trying to hide the fact that they copied this. That's insane. When your teacher asks you if you copied your friend's homework and you say no. All right, well, <laughs> let's see if this actually performs well, because if it does and you've been wanting the naked heat, but you don't want to spend the money on it. I don't know, just saying. <laughs> so I'm first going to go into this shade right over here, and I'm just going to pop this above my crease. Oh, pigment. Pigment's definitely there. First impressions on this eyeshadow. The pigmentation is pretty strong. Like that's a really light color and uh, it's showing up pretty intensely on my eyes. And I don't even have like a super intense primer on. I don't really even have a primer. I just have concealer going on. So that is impressive and it is blending nicely, which is really the most important thing. Okay, I'm gonna go into this shade right over here. And I'm just gonna apply this right underneath the same super fluffy brush more so in my crease, just to add some definition. Interested to see how this is going to last on my eyes because it's one thing having good pigmentation and blending nicely. The real test is to see how this is actually gonna last throughout the day. Now I'm actually going to go into another product because I really wanna try it out. This is the Milk Makeup uh, Eye Pigment and this one is in the shade Hotel Lobby. What a weird name. It's like a cool tone champagne. And I'm gonna just take some on the back of my hand and apply this all over my lid with a flat uh, synthetic shader brush. This is my MAC 242. Oh. It just makes the eye look so beautiful. And this is amazing. And that was by using like literally a dot of product. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. That is so freaking pretty. So this makeup look is now going to take a bit of a wild turn. I have this wet and wild color icon eyeshadow quad that I recently got. And, and this color right over here really caught my eye. Like, is that not the most beautiful raspberry shade? It's so intense and gorgeous. And I'm really interested to see how intense this will actually show up in my eyes. This is a limited edition palette, by the way. It's called, I'd probably tell you the name, Flock Party. <laughs> okay, that is a gorgeous color and it definitely did show up really nice and bright. We're gonna try Lash Topia from Bare Minerals. It's a mega volume mineral based mascara. I have not yet used this. This is what the wand looks like. I really feel like they didn't do anything to my lashes. Like they still look so not there. I don't really like the way my lashes look besides the fact that it literally made me get mascara all over my eyelid. Honestly, I think I may just put lashes on. So now I'm gonna go into this Ciate Blush and Baby Doll. This actually matches my lower lash line color perfectly, so this is a great color to use. Um, it's supposed to be an illuminating blush. I have another one of these in another color and I love it. This color looks so pretty. I like that a lot. For my highlighter today, I'm gonna to be taking this one from Burberry. This is the Rose Gold Number no. 4 Fresh Glow Highlighter. And pop some on the top of my cheekbones. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's really intense. That's not what I expected. Ooh, okay. Very, very intense. <laughs> you know when things are too metallic and it just makes your pores look 30 times bigger? That's not really doing that to me. This is actually just giving me the craziest glow. Holy shit. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my brows. I'm gonna put on some lashes, clean up all this mascara, and then I'll be back to finish everything off the lip. BRB. So I just got a text from my sister telling me that she landed um, 45 minutes earlier than she was supposed to. So I gotta like rush out of here to go pick her up from the airport. So I'm just gonna put this Juicy Shaker on in the shade Freedom of Peach because I don't have time to go find something new to try. Um, this is the finished look though what we've got going on so far. I'm gonna keep you guys updated though on my vlog camera. I'll give you a close up of what the foundations look like in a little bit when I'm not in such a rush, but so far I'm loving the way everything is looking. Okay, gotta go. Oh. <laughs> you look so creepy. Hey guys, well, first of all, so sorry about that abrupt ending to the last clip that you just saw because I was <laughs> so stressed. I thought that I was going to 
um, miss picking my sister up from the airport, but I ended up getting her. All is good. Um, I've had quite a chill afternoon. I've, I've sort of just been hanging out with David, getting some work done, not really doing anything too crazy. I cannot wait to rip these lashes off of my face. So right now it's around like 4.30, so that means I've had this makeup on uh, since like 9-ish, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's seven hours. Eyeshadow's looking good. Eyeshadow is actually still very vibrant. Like it still looks as it did when I first applied it, so that just tells me that everything is lasting really well. My lower lash line is still vibrant, but it's definitely faded just slightly. I gotta say though, the Milk eye pigment although i love how intense it looks it really accentuates any wrinkle that i have on my eyelid like, like it almost looks like tin foil a little bit you know i'm not really sure if i'm into that look the base is looking really really awesome i'm actually really surprised with how much i like this foundation because i really expected the worst with this this is definitely though not going to be a foundation that i'm going to be wearing on like an everyday basis it's a little bit too heavy for my preferences i think if um, i'm going to an event or if i'm just going out this is definitely going to be foundation that i'm going to be reaching for again i think it wore really beautifully it really did not settle in like the lines of my face my smile lines are always a big problem area foundations tend to like crease there and settle and that hasn't happened at all which i'm really really impressed by it also hasn't accentuated any of my dry patches or faded anywhere if you have dry skin i would definitely recommend that you apply either like a heavy moisturizer or a glowy primer like i did underneath just to sort of give it a nice hydrating base to sit on and i think you'll be good to go if you have oily skin you would probably really like this i love this highlighter it's so intense but it's not unflattering like i said when i first applied it it did not accentuate my pores it lasted really well too it still looks so glowing i kept on catching myself in the mirror um, and just like staring at my highlighter because it's just really 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 pretty Oh my god, this is better than taking your bra off at the end of the day, I swear. Alright guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts down below. And also let me know um, if you tried any of these products and what your thoughts are on them. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. As always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And of course, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.